Hello 2020, it is me, the universe. Hey universe, what's up? How you doing, my man? Thank you for inviting me over. How dope was this year? Just let me know. Oh, also, yo, I got you a little something. Oh, my bad man, psych. I drank the whole thing on accident on the way over, sorry. So now that you're interesting, insane year is over. I am here to go over your year report, just to review everything you've done, even though I have no idea why I'm reviewing this since everybody knows about it already. And um, yeah, we're just gonna go down the list. We all know you've done quite too much already, am I right? <laughs> it's never too much, yeah. So, here we go. Starting off with a worldwide pandemic, followed by every single person losing their job, followed by people being kept in isolation for months on end, followed by people starting to lose their sanity due to lack of human contact and being kept in isolation, followed by fires everywhere, followed by protests, followed by violence, followed by the worst election ever in the history of America. Yeah, I'm glad you're proud of yourself, but I am obligated to ask you if you want to do any other I'm glad you're proud of yourself, but I am obligated to ask you as the universe if there are any last minute things you would like to add before we hand over the new year to 2021. So is there anything else you would like to add 2020? All right, so I got a list of really dope things we can make happen in the next 24 hours, okay? Hear me out. So, second pandemic that only lasts a day, except this time there is no internet and everyone is stuck with their least favorite person in the entire planet. Also, all of TikTok and YouTube becomes one kind of video, and those are videos of moms trying to be cool. A redo of the entire election that we will all relive again, except this time, the other one wins. All TV and streaming services will have a total of three different options. The Grinch musical that just came out this Christmas, all cheesy rom-coms with really bad acting and unlikable characters, and every live action remake of every anime ever, except Death Note is gonna be played five times more than the rest. Wait, 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 I forgot one more, man. I created a fourth kind of weather. Instead of sunny, windy, rainy, or snowy, there's rocky. Literally raining rocks from the sky. Hot rocks. Great, great, awesome, great ideas. I'm gonna write those down. You are literally a psychopath. Get out of here. You don't know who you're talking to. I'm 2020. 2020 will live on forever. <laughs> Get out. Hey, cool it, man. Some people can't handle crazy. Psh, tough crowd. Hello lovely humans and happy new year! It is officially 2021 and I know that we are all completely over the moon. If you're not then cool, but I'm pretty sure we all are. Um, so I am dressed a little over the top today for my video because it's a new year and I am, I could not be more excited and more pumped guys. So all jokes aside from that first skit, 2020 has been one crazy year. Um, I think we could all agree mutually on that. So I'm going to share with you guys four important lessons that I've learned personally during this literal insane year that none of us were expecting that made no sense, that was just insane. I don't know how else to describe it besides insane. Today as I talk to you guys, I'm going to be drinking my favorite green tea, nice and relaxing, and in typical Kelly True Thoughts fashion, I have a candle burning here from my mother. Oatmeal cookie scent. It is very, very relaxing. So we will put that right here. And I hope you guys will enjoy listening to the lessons I've learned during the craziest year of all of our human existence on Earth. <laughs> so let's get started. So the first thing that 2020 actually taught me was that it is so, so important to pay attention to your health and to really check in with yourself and think, am I really taking care of myself and giving myself the love and the care that I deserve? Um, being stuck in a pandemic situation where we have all been in quarantine, trapped in our own homes with our own thoughts, it became easy for all of us to pay more attention to our body and our overall health and how we've been feeling, especially during such a hard time when we've been working so hard on trying to stay safe and healthy. For me personally, it has been very transformative and I have been able to battle some demons that I've had my entire life that I honestly don't know if I would have battled if it wasn't for 2020, which is kind of crazy because I don't wanna say that I am thankful for 2020. It was definitely a disaster and a horrible thing to happen to all of us, but in a way it was kind of a blessing for me in some ways personally. I will link this particular video that I'm about to talk about below in my description, but 
I decided during 2020 upon doing a lot of self-reflection and being in a very dark place to come out to you guys on YouTube about the fact that I have been struggling with an eating disorder um, and anorexia for most of my life from age 14 up until, well, only a year ago. And it took the pandemic to make me realize that I really wanted to change. I was able to sit with myself more. I wasn't so busy running to work and always having things to do. And I had time to realize that ignoring the, this huge issue that's been causing me so much pain and hurting me for so long wasn't something that was making me happy anymore. And I decided to slowly start taking little steps in a healthier direction to finally start battling that. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you guys that it's been an easy road. It has not, and I'm not going to tell you guys either that I am perfect. If any of you guys know anything about eating disorders in particular, they are it's not like a process where like you decide to get better and you're better. It is a very up and down process, but the most important thing is to decide to keep working on yourself and to choose health first. And I will tell you guys, I've come the longest way that I ever have in my entire life towards recovery and I am so, so proud of myself starting off 2021, being in such a better place and having put to bed and gotten rid of officially so many dark habits that I've been using for years. I feel so free, I feel so much more alive, and I really am so grateful that I had that time to really sit and reflect and realize that what I was doing wasn't good for my mental health and wasn't good for me as a person. So one thing that 2020 taught me is that every once in a while, no matter how busy we are, even if we're not in quarantine, it is important to sit down with yourself and really check in with yourself and think, are my habits really making me the happiest and healthiest I can be? If you don't feel good, maybe change one little thing about your routine or your diet and just listen to your body. Listening to your body is so important. We live in a world where we're running around and going crazy and our minds are always going a million miles an hour and we're, you know, glued to social media. <laughs> and we're not always realizing when our bodies are being run down. I live in New York, the busiest city in the world, and I forget to check in with myself many times. And this pandemic really taught me, this year really taught me, the importance of checking in with yourself and the importance of self-love. Speaking of self-love, the second thing that 2020 taught me is that you don't need anyone else to love yourself. And that is a lesson that I really needed to learn my entire life, guys. Um, I will openly admit that ever since like the end of high school, early college, I have been trying so hard to find my own love through other people, through other people accepting who I am, through other people accepting me into their group, through other people approving of me. And I have changed in so many different ways throughout my life, kind of like a community to different styles and just tried to just fit in with other kinds of people even as an adult even after college because I just wanted that sense of feeling loved that sense of feeling included and welcomed and even if it meant not truly being myself I was kind of okay with that for most of my life well quarantine taught me that that is no way to live and it definitely does not make you happy being forced to be alone with myself and I didn't have any roommates, guys. I was alone during the first three months of the pandemic, um, March through March, April, May, through June even. Um, I was by myself because my roommates left and went home to their hometowns. And I stayed behind in the city, so I was kind of forced to kind of think, wow, um, there is no one here now to really give me this validation. And it really made me think, like, why do I seek this? Why do I feel like I need other people who might not even accept who I really am to tell me that they accept me and that they love me. And I realized that I never needed that. I needed to just explore and create and let myself be who I am. And through doing that, even though it was scary at first, I was able to realize that I could give myself the love I needed to get myself through such a hard, scary time. And now every day I do wake up and I really do feel true love for myself. And it was really crazy to kind of mend that damaged relationship of seeking validation from others that I've had for most of my life during such an insane time, but it kind of is what my journey was. And I want to remind you lovely humans that other people are not going to give you that. Only you can give yourself that love. So you have to look in the mirror and own who you are and tell yourself you love yourself every day and don't change for anybody else. That is another huge lesson I've learned. The third 
huge lesson I've learned, again, kind of piggybacks off self-love because you do have to love yourself to do this, is taking risks is a good thing. It's a really good thing. I took so many risks during 2020, and not even just me, but friends and loved ones that I have. I've seen them take risks. I've seen friends write plays who have never written plays before. I I started a talk show with my one friend, and neither of us have started a talk show before. I've seen people write music. I've seen people sing who never sang before. And I took risks, guys. Like, But one of the first out of character things I started doing when I was going crazy in quarantine was I just started having like dance parties by myself. Like, I never did that in the past, but it was kind of a risk, but I enjoyed it. And it was something I didn't think I would enjoy, but it was something that made me feel confident, made me feel happy, got me up and moving. And for me, that was a risk, because in the past, I would have felt kind of silly doing that. And I did a lot of other things I wouldn't normally do as well. I expanded myself so much as an artist. I started finally working on my own cartoon project and believing in myself to put it out there, which you guys will be seeing in the new year. I'm so excited about that. I can't wait to show it to you guys. It's called Knick Knack, and there will be more up about that very, very soon. And um, yeah, I just took more risks than I ever have before in my entire life during 2020, which is kind of crazy because you would think it would be a pretty scary time to take risks considering we were in such a scary situation to begin with. But I think when you're forced to be alone in a little room for months on end, you kind of run out of things to do. And it kind of makes you realize, okay, I've always wanted to try this. What has stopped me? And the thing I've learned, lovely humans, is that nothing really stops us from doing something out of the box or doing something that normally would make us afraid. The only thing that stops us is ourselves and our own fears and the fear of people judging us. But I will say, out of every risk that I've taken during 2020, everything I've done just because I've wanted to, not because, everything I've done just because I wanted to, not even things that I would normally do, I just kind of felt like it. I just kind of went with my gut and did it. All of those things have brought nothing but positivity into my life. I haven't had one person be mean or spew negativity onto me. And even if they did, why does that matter? I felt so happy going outside of my box and outside of my comfort zone for once. So remember, lovely humans, it's good to take a risk every once in a while. It helps you grow, it helps you gain confidence, it helps you realize that you have more passions and talents and things that you can do than you give yourself credit for. So do not forget that and maybe do something out of the box or a little different this 2021. I know that I am going to keep taking risks from now on and I definitely feel a thousand times more confident than I ever have in my entire life after this year, which is kind of crazy. And finally, the last lesson that the insane year of 2020 has taught me is that it is always possible to hold on to hope and get back in touch with your spirituality. I have always been a very spiritual person. When I started this YouTube channel, I talked a lot about spirituality. I talked a lot about meditation and positive affirmations and manifesting things we wanted to come into our lives. And I'm not going to lie, when the pandemic started, I went from being so, so busy, running around every day, you know, having work first and foremost on my mind, and I just had so many other things that were just like eating up all my time that I kind of lost touch with my spirituality. And during quarantine, I was able to get it back. I started meditating again. I started journaling again. I started realizing how these moments of just peace and quiet and just sitting with your own thoughts and hearing your breath and imagining what you need from the universe right now, how powerful those moments are. And it helped me realize that doing those practices is still a really positive thing for me. That really helps me as a person and makes me happy. And also, we had to hold on to hope during this time, right guys? We had to hope that everything would be okay, everything would turn back to normal. Things are still not totally back to normal, but they're a lot better than they were. And I think we've learned a lot this year. I think we've learned a lot about being clean and being safe and taking care of ourselves and being considerate of others. And most of all, we've learned that you never really know what's going to happen. 
There's no way to predict how things will be. So you have to hold on to some kind of peace and serenity and hope. And if you feel that you had a peaceful practice or you had some form of spirituality, whatever that is for you, no matter if you're religious or non-religious or whatever brings you some kind of peace and calming and sense of hope and safety, you can get that back. You just have to make the choice to start practicing again. You never fully lose that. And lovely humans, if any of you guys have never really gotten into a spiritual practice, there are many ways you could do it. I usually, I started by just sitting for two minutes a day and just listening to relaxing music and just breathing in energy and letting my mind go where it w happened to wander. So remember, you can always get back in touch with that and definitely one of my goals for 2021 is to keep a regular spiritual practice again. So. Those are my lessons that I've learned during this insane year. I hope you guys have enjoyed and I really hope that maybe I was able to inspire some of you to look to 2021 as a brand new start and um, give yourself some extra self-love. I can't believe we did it guys. We made it through <laughs> and we're moving on to a whole new beginning and I really feel strongly that this is a whole new start for everybody, for the whole world. and. I want to thank you guys for being there for me. Um, making these videos has really been such an emotional support for me during such a hard time. A time where I was alone most of the year and in a really dark place. And if, if it wasn't for you guys, if it wasn't for this passion for my channel and making this content and, you know, knowing that when I talk, sometimes you guys care about what I have to say. It really has been healing for me and you guys have helped me get through 2020 as well, for sure. It wasn't just me. So I wanna send love to all of you guys. Here's to 2021. I think it's gonna be an amazing year. Stay lovely, lovely humans, and I'll see you next time.